today I'll show you how to create a trash bottle. So first of all, go to the four different view, and I will enter front view by hey space key, and we'll start with create and curve tool, and one of these. So CV curve tool or EP curve tool. So let's do CV curve tool. So here is the y axis. Here's the uh, uh, the floor plan. Okay. So basically, we'll just draw an outline of the bottle. So I start from the top. And uh, I need to be curved here. All right, once you've done, hit return key. So this is the outline of it. And then we'll go back to perspective view. And with this curve selected, uh, we'll go to surface. And we'll apply revolve, but let's go to is option box. And we would like to uh, revolve this uh, curve along y axis and with a 360 degree. And we want to put the uh, uh, segments, which is a subdivision, as 8, and then apply. So once you apply, you can see that it's like a, how you make a ceramic. So we just rotate this curve in 360 degree, so we get this. Uh, uh, surface object. So this is a, not a polygon model. You know, when you go create a model, you can create a polygon property or NURB primitives. So this is a NURB object. So what we'll do first, we'll want to flip the face. So now the inside face is out, so that's why it is in black color. So with this bottle selected, go to surface, and on the bottom you should see uh, reverse direction. So once you reverse it, now the positive side is on the surface. All right. So now, with it remains selected, we'll go to modify, convert, and we we'll, we would like to convert this nerve object to the polygon. And let's go to option box. So here you can decide what subdivisions you want. So I normally do quartz. So when you transfer it to a polygon object, it will, uh, you know, the surface will be quartz instead of a triangle. Okay. And I would like to do general. And then we put a, a number here, so you'll have a subdivision on X and Y. Okay, U and V, which is subdivision X and Y. And I just put a 25 here, so let's apply. So here is it. All right, and in your outliner, you should see that it. this is the uh, original nerve object. And this is the polygon object it generated. Okay, so here's the tricky thing. So right now, if I select this curve, and when I move the curve to a different location, I'm still able to change this um, nerve object and also this polygon object. And see if I right-click on this uh, curve's control vertex, I can also change the shape of it. Okay, so that's important. So if you still want to edit your bottle to a different shape, you can control this curve and uh, change the shape. If you're done with it, and then just select this uh, bottle, polygon bottle, and okay, I want to go back to its original location. All right, select it and go to edit and delete by type and delete its history. All right, so now if I select this curve, you can see that I am still able to change this uh, nerve object based on this curve, but not that polygon bottle. All right, so once you're done, you can select the curve and the nerve object and hit delete. So this is our curve, uh, our bottle, the model. And let's refine it a little bit. So I'll go to face selection mode, and I would like to maybe start from here. Select this face, and hold on shift, and double click on this face. So it also like this whole uh, face loop. And hold on shift, select this one, and double click on this face, and you'll have this loop selected. So do the same thing here, here. All right. So we have three face loops selected. And we'll go to edit mesh. We'll apply extrude. And I would like to push it in. Alright, so give this kind of structure here. And let me see. And here I want to close the bottle as well. So I go to edge, select move, double click on one edge. So I'm selected the whole edge loop. And go to edit mesh, go to extrude, and we'll just the change. Wait, we don't want it to go down, so we make. Um, I think we'll just hit R key for scale and then press the center cube and scale it down. 
All right, so we want to repeat this process, extrude and scale down. So since I'm repeat the last action I applied, which is extrude, and then I can just hit G K G as grade. Okay, if you hit G, basically you just repeat the last action, and then hit R key again and scale it down. And G K repeat the process and scale it down. So once I get this level, I want to uh, seal the bottom of this hole. So what I can do is I can hold down Command with my mouse right button. And then here, I'm able to go to the vertices. OK, so basically it switches an action from the edge to the vertices. And then hold down Shift and with your mouse right button. And you will see merge vertices and merge vertices. All right, it doesn't merge because they are too far away from each other. So if you just increase the threshold, which is the gap between the uh, vertex that can be merged. So if you increase it, now we seal it. Okay, see, if I deselect and select it again, and I move, there's just the one point there. Okay, so we fix the bottom. And uh, I want to add some structure here as well. So I would like to hold on Shift, use your mouse right button, and then use Insert Edge Move Tool, but go to Option Box. And we would like to use relative distance from edge. Okay, so we want to add a edge loop here. All right, and hit QK. Once you're done, hit QK to quit the tool. See, now the tool is still remaining selected. You don't want to apply it more times, right? So hit QK. Once you're done, it'll go back to selection mode. So I'll go back to the face selection. Select the first face, hold on Shift, double click on the second one. All right, add mesh and extrude. And we would like to change the thickness. So we want this structure close to the cap of the bottle. Okay, and then go back to edge selection mode. Select this edge and extrude. And change the thickness, push it in. And then repeat this process by hit GK and change the thickness and push it down. Uh, we don't have to increase the, create the inner side because when you have this model, the audience will never be able to see what's inside. So we'll just leave it you know, like this. And this is important when you create a model for game, you want to minimize the vertex you have. Right, so here's the, my vertex account. So now this whole bottle only has a man uh, 13 vertices, but if I also create the inner side by you know select all the individual faces, and then do uh, uh, extrude. By doing that, I can create the faces both on outside and inside. But I'm going to double the vertex. All right. So now once we've done this, we'll just go to the UV part. So before we do deformation on this bottle, we want to make sure uh, our UV is good. So if you go to modeling and go to UV, okay, it's hidden uh, because my window is small. So if you go to UV and UV editor, so this is a UV, okay, that's definitely not correct. So I would like to go back to four different view and go to the front view and go to face selection mode and select all faces on the side, okay, and then Go to UV and apply a cylindrical mapping. Okay, so basically this is the map for the for the side. Okay, that piece. And now we want to select this bottom face and the top face. So we can just go back to face selection mode and just select here. So this will select the top face and bottom face since that's since that's the only thing that mapped. Okay, wait a second. And we also have here because this face is you know, facing up and facing down. So we hold on Shift and select one face, and then double click on select the other face. So this will select the face loop. So these four faces, they are aiming down or up, you know, along Y axis. So we can go to UV again, but this time planar mapping, but open is option box. And we want to project from Y axis. So I want to loop down from Y and do project. So these are the faces. Okay, we can select 
go to UV and double click on one of the UV and you'll be able to select the UV shell. So this thing is the bottom. Okay. And this one, okay, is the top. Since this face is the top, this is the top, so it's blue color. So that means the UV is um you know it's cracked. But if it shows in red color, then it means uh the UV is upside down. So I'll just double click on you know, one UV, be able to select the whole UV shell and go to modify and flip. So this will flip it over. Okay. So you can move each pieces out by just a double click on any UV. So here we'll just do modify and flip. Okay, so this is the UV for those four pieces. Okay. And for this piece, let's see what we have. So I just move this up, move this down, and this is other piece. Oh, the inside. Okay, so I can just go to modify and uh, flip. Okay, and for this one, let's see. Yeah, it's this piece, and here's this piece. Okay, cool. So now we have pretty much everything. So what we can do is. Here the inside, you can see this is the right proportion. So we can go to UV, double click on one UV and select the whole shell and hold on shift and use your mouse right button, go to unfold and unfold again. So this well display is um, right proportion. So we hit EK and rotate it and make it, you know, uh, in the right direction. And move it up a little bit. Okay, same thing for these two pieces. So select um, some of the UV and hold on command and use your mouse right key and go to UV shell. This will be able to select the whole UV shell. And hold on shift and use right key and then unfold. Oh wait, unfold. Here we go. Again, we'll just have to uh, rotate it. And for this piece, we want it to be separated in two pieces instead of one because once we unfold, you can see it looks strange. It's because this whole piece here, the faces are small and here's big. And once they are on one piece and we unfold, here will be really stretched out and here will be stretched. See, these faces are not displayed in its right proportion. If I select the face and press F key to zoom in, you can see that it's small. And it's supposed to be, this space is supposed to be bigger than that one. But see how different is here and how different is here. Right? So I can select the both faces. So what I would do is um, I would select the edge, which is on the opposite side of it. So I just a double click on it. And go through here. Okay. So this is the upper side edge. Okay, that one. So now I found it. So here. Double click on the edge at the UV editor. Double click, you will select this whole edge. Okay, but only on this piece of UV. See, only on this piece of UV. So you're not selecting this edge. Continue from the bottom. Okay, so with this selected, go hold down Shift and use your mouse right key and cut. So now you will cut it into two pieces and then you can go to UV and uh, Select each individual shell and go to unfold, unfold. See? So now we release the pressure of from um, the top part and the bottom part a little bit. Okay, then what you'll have to do is put everything inside of this cell because your capture will only be um, here from 0 to 1, one on y axis. From 0 to 1 on x axis. Normally, I would like to uh, start work on the body. So select these two pieces and fill them in. And, and here's the bottom. Since the bottom connects this edge, so I can compare you know, their size. And then I can scale it down and let it approximately match this size. OK. OK, that's good. So that's the bottom piece. And then for the cap, 
So this is these faces are you know the top, and here's the inside, and here's the outside. So basically, the outside connect to here, connect to top face. So I can use that as a comparison first. Okay, make it bigger, and then the size match. Okay, so you notice, basically, I switch from UV mode or face mode, or even you can do edge selection mode to change the size of each shell. Okay, so now I switch back to UV. So the UV here, the face should be equal to the in inner side of this uh, circle, right? So that means I'll just have to make it bigger. I need it smaller. That's good. Okay, so that's these two pieces. And for these three circles, their proportion is correct relatively because I select all these pieces together and applied a uh, planar mapping. So we did the like, projection mapping at the same time, so their proportion is correct relatively. So this piece, okay, this piece needs to match with you know this circle, which is this one. On the outside. Okay, so I just scale it up. Okay, here is it. Now I can select all these six pieces, and then I can use uh, here. So this edge is here. So I can use that as a references and compare it to here, this one. All right. So I'll just move it in here and let me bring it in here. And I can scale it down and uh, scale it down more. Okay, getting close. Close. Yeah, that's correct. So see this then of this edge is equal to the this edge then. Okay. So now I can sort of this whole thing so all of these pieces has the right proportion. All right, so now I can fill them in. So basically, I don't want to waste much space. I don't want to do that. You know, make it too small. And even though it's very easy for me to put every pieces in, but you wasted a lot of space for texture, right? So normally, I would like to. Um, use this space as much as possible. So maybe up a little bit, and then select this piece, and I would like to rotate it, and have some gaps here, some gaps here, and put it straight, and this piece up. Okay, so now you can see that I get a small issue here. So what I can do is, um, I can maybe pull this piece down and put it here. Okay, here it works. And then I can okay, pull these three pieces here. And if they don't match, and then what I can do is I can select this piece and put it on the right top corner. And this one here, and here. Okay, so now only three circles is pretty easy. Right? Okay, so now we get this UV map. What I'll do is we'll go to object mode, and then select this bottle, and go to image, and on the bottom, UV snapshot. So, you'll export this map. <laughs> And this size it totally depends on what's use of uh, this model and uh, how much resolution you want on the texture. So, if um, you only create one bottle and you want to do a nice render, you can do twenty forty eight, which will give you a really high resolution image, and you can put a lot of texture on it, right? Uh, but normally for gaming, we always do ten twenty four. Or even smaller, like uh, five twelve. Okay, 
So here, as a demonstration, I'll just do uh, 10, 24. See, once I put the x value and the y value updates, and for your UV area, make it U1 and V is Y, which is basically here, this base. U, which is Y. Oh, sorry. U is 1, which is the X space. And Y, which is V, vertically, is 1. Okay, and you can uh, put it in click on browser and put it in location and change the name and apply and close. So once you've done, you will have this uh, nice UV map. And you can use that as a reference, as a start point for you to create maps. So here, with this selected, I go to Edit and Denate by Type, Denate History. Oh, I forgot one thing. Go to Modify and uh, Phrase is Transformation. So, if you have, you know, um, for example, change it as a skill, change the rotation and uh, skill, you will have a lot of nodes here. And once you go to Phrase transformation, you will zero it out. Okay, so let me go back. Um, so you want to uh, phrase its transformation and also go to edit and denate by type. Denate its history. Here is its history. And we get all the way from the beginning, x2 different faces, and um, uh, changes UV, and uh, we get here. So we'll just denate its whole history. So now this is a clean model and we can do a lot of experiment with it. So here, I get one and I'll name it bottle uh, one. And I want to create a, a few duplications because I want uh, to have different shape with it. All right, maybe one more. Okay, and move it up and separate each one. Okay, this is gonna be really interesting. So, um, basically, what we'll do is we want to apply a uncloth effect to that. So we'll go to switch from modeling to FX, and we'll go to the uncloth and create a uncloth. Okay, so once you create an uncloth, and here's your timeline. So I'll go back to frame one, and then if you um, I'm going to close this window, and if you click on play, you can see that here start to drop down, but what I want to do is I want to have a object collide with these bottles to change the shape. Okay, so now let me bring these five bottles up, so they already has uncloth with it, so I just put a bottle in a different uh, position, and maybe this one, I would like to let it face to here, the side edge. Okay, so I want it to collide onto here on the edge. And for this box, I want it, I want it to collide with here, this color. Okay, I want this one collide with here. And for here, I want it to drop down to the floor actually. Okay, something like that. And for this one, I would like it to maybe rotate, make it upside down. I want it to collide with the floor as well as the cube. So I want it to go maybe this way. Okay, so now uh, as you pull your timeline back to frame one, and if you play, it still feel down, but it, it uh, go through these objects and nothing happened. So what you'll have to do is select this cube, also select uh, this plan, and go to uncloth, and you want to apply uh, create passive collider. So this will tell the program that um, this cube and this plan is a collider, and it's going to collide with the bottle. Okay, so now if you play again, you can see that it's a snower, and see what happened. So I just suppose the animation. See what happened here. It altered the shape of the bottle here as well. Here as well. So I think I want to keep this shape. I want to keep this shape. So if you just go through a different keyframe, you can see that 
and change the animation. Okay, if you go back to frame one, I lost the shape I just created because NCLOF animation is generated in real time. Okay, so nothing has been saved. Let's do it again. So if I hit play, and see here, if I want to stop it here, you will need to select the model and this model as well. Okay, and go to edit and delete by type, delete its history. So this will break down uh, the connection between this bottle and uh, the collider. And it will also erase its uncloth uh, properties. So now, see if I move it to a different location, I can see how it looks. And then if I go continue play, you can see that it doesn't change, right? But here is remain change, okay? So here, these two bottle, you just keep that shape. All right, so now I want to keep this shape, this shape, and this one as well. So I select all of them and go to edit and delete by type, delete history. All right, so now it doesn't matter if you continue to play, see the time it still goes, or if you will go back to frame one, nothing changed. Okay, so now you have this uh, trash model and uh, we haven't finished yet. So do you notice uh, these notes? So those are in clock notes. So even though we have the history of the bottle, but the scene is not clean. Okay, see here. We um we still have uh this in cloth notes we have applied. So we'll have to select in uh, new clear and in cloth notes and uh and rig it. Select all of them and hit denate. So once you denate, you see that um it pump up a new shape. So basically that's the original shape of the bottle. And this is the deformation we've done. So basically when, once we applied an uncloth, it hide its original shape and generate a new shape and then do deformation of it. So once you denate the history, so you turn the original shape back on. Okay, so um, your, your on nanner, if you go to on nanner, on your side, it may look like this. Okay, so this is one single object. I cannot go into it and denate the original shape. So what I have to do is right click here and turn on shapes. And then you can go to each individual object and uh, find uh, uh, the shapes it has. And then select the shape you don't want and denate. Here as well, here, oops, here and here, okay. So now your model is super, super clean. All right. And I can delete the unrelated themes. So once you save this uh, project, uh, or you export them as an FBX file, you can import them to your game engine. Okay, so now I just use the same method and I created a lot, a lot of trash bottles. Okay, so this is the original one, as you can see. And these are the trash bottle with the different shapes. And uh, remember, I exported uh, this UV map earlier. See, I just put it on the top as a references. And then this is in Photoshop. And I start to uh, put a different layer to it to make a picture. Okay, so here and here I changed it. I just uh, created a logo. All right, nasty water bottle. Okay, nasty brand. Uh, and barcode and this text. And then the nutrition effect, and then I um, put a texture on top of it. And for this texture, I just change the you know uh, from normal blending mode from normal to multiply, and drop down the opacity to make it realistic. So I created one, and I also created a lot. Okay, let me turn off the UV so you can see it better. Okay. Okay. Still get water. Okay, different brand I created. Okay, so we can go back to here and apply it. So after I finished um, making the texture in Photoshop, I export them as a PNG image.
and uh, I put the files in here, source image folder, and here are the images. Okay, in source image folder, and then you can go to Windows and rendering editor and uh, hypershade. And uh, basically, we can uh, create material, and we can create a, a number material, and we can rename it as no, just very simple M one. Material zero one, okay, and add is counter channel. Can you come shrink it? Can you come this checker and use a two D textured file? And this will load a file and use the texture we just created. Okay, so like it and click on open. So material one. So this is the material we just created and we get give it a map and we can apply to any of these bottom. Boom. Okay, let me apply it to here as well. So you can see, even though I have a deformed the shape of the bottle, but uh, the texture, right, the texture map is still good. It's keep its original position. Okay. See, here's the deformation, then the texture deformed. That's because, remember, we have done the UV first. Uh, if we go to if I go back to modeling here on the top, if I go to UV and UV editor, so this is the UV of the original bottle, and once I deform the shape, the UV have, has not changed, even though the shape has changed. Okay, see, all these bottles when I select them, the UV remain the same. So that means, after I created all these different type of bottles in different shapes. And I can create a different version of the texture and then just apply it to the bottle. And uh, they will display a lot of variety, variety of shapes, variety of texture. Okay, so let's get all the texture applied to our model and let's see how it looks. Okay, so now I cleaned up my material a little bit and delete all the unused material. And I've created eight materials based on the textures I've made and applied each texture to each material. See, these are all the different textures I created. All right, so now let's apply it to our model. Since we have a lot of bottles, we can select uh, you know, multiple and apply with different material and see how it looks. This is material three. Okay, so now let's look, look at the bottles. So this is the uh, the panda, the water, and Evinian. Okay, this is a uh, Fuji. All right, now you can make your bottles even more realistic by creating more maps other than the texture map. So these are the texture maps I created. So I just go back to Photoshop, and based on this texture map. I start to create a transparency map, which is a pastry map. And anything marked in white color, it'll be solid. And anything that is gray will be half transparent, and a black area will be 100% transparent. Okay, so these area are the. Okay, so this is the bottle. And here's the texture. So that area are here, the plastic. So I want it to be half transparent. And here, which is the paper I want it to be solid. Okay, so I also created a R map, which is reflectivity. So uh, the white color will reflect lights, black area will not reflect lights. Okay, so that's the reflectivity map. Um, I also created a normal map. So right now this is a bump map, which is made by black and white color. So I want to kind of create those kind of bump effects on the bottle. So I did that by bump map. So white area will push out and black area will push in. So since bound map is just uh, generate the shape based on black and white, which is brightness, normal map is getting more and more popular. Okay, so I just copied this bound map. And on Photoshop, you can go to the tall menu, filter, click on that, and then you'll go to 3D and then apply generate normal map. So basically normal map is based on three colors red, blue, and uh, green. So that's a three axis of a 3D program. So 
it generates the shape based on three colors, which is a three different axes, so it's more, more accurate. Okay, so you can keep uh, the default setting, or you can alter all of these uh, things to make a different feeling. For example, you can do blurry, and then you can soft your result. But I wanted a sharp, okay, and you can do detailed. All right, so just okay. And once you click on OK, see, this is the normal map, this is bone map. So it just generated the normal map based on the black and white bone map I have. OK, so I'll save all of these maps as a JPEG file, but before you do that, don't forget to turn off your UV reference line. OK, so here we can go to Create and go to Lights, and we can create a, a point light. So we can go to the tool menu, turn on lights, turn on shadow, turn on ambient occlusion to see the result. So this is with the texture map. So if I go to its material, here's the material. And if I change the material to a different type, for example, bling, and let me put the name back. So this is with the color map. And here's the reflection. You can see the reflection just goes everywhere. But if I go to its reflectivity, here, specular color, and go to the checker box and get a file, and get a reflection map onto it. And now let's see the result. It doesn't reflect light everywhere. It just reflects light from a specific area. So with this material selected, I just go to here under its notes. Okay, let me make it bigger and uh, let's clean it. And with this material selected, find its notes. I would like to just denote all these notes. So this is a clean material. And I just want to show you uh, different maps and different effects. So with the map material selected, and this time we will go to its uh, transparency channel. Okay, and uh, we'll apply the transparency map and see how it looks. Okay, so here is 50% uh, transparency, but uh, not in entire piece. You can see it still gets some texture, and this is a transparency map. So here is 100% opaque, and here is about like a uh, virus from 40% to 0% opaque. So it's uh, half transparent. Okay, so this is how it looks. As transparency map. So if we go back here and denote is transparency node. Okay, clean material. And if we go down and go to bump mapping, and we will apply the normal map we created. So here for the bump map, since we are using normal map, so we'll change use as from bump to uh, tangent space normal. And we'll click on this arrow and load the normal map we just created. Alright, this is how it looks. As the lights goes towards the uh, bottle, you can see the shadow, the shadow of the bottle, it changes. So now it looks like we have created all these bumps on the surface of the bottle, but uh, actually, you know, when you select this mesh, you can see we only have flat faces. So that's the beautiful thing of uh, texture mapping. All right, so now let's put everything together, the bump map, the texture map. So if I select the material, I'll uh, apply the color map back to it. That's the color map. And uh, transparency. That's a T is a transparency. Select the map and reflectivity, which is a specular color. We get a reflection map. Okay, so that's the final result. And since we are not doing a real render, uh, this is just a preview, so it doesn't look you know, as it should be. Once you do a real render, it will look much better.